Let me give you a three-step process in making a biblical case for the Trinity. Uh, number one, you start with the very clear passages that suggest that there's only one God. And this is kind of the, the, the foundation, if you will. Uh, the Bible clearly teaches again and again and again that there is only one God. So you look at Deuteronomy 6.4, you look at Isaiah 43.10, Isaiah 44.6 and 8, John 17.3, and on and on and on. Clearly, the Old and New Testament teach that there's only one God. And so here's the oneness part of the Trinity. But then the next step would be looking at the distinction between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is a distinction between the three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so you have, you know, the baptism of Jesus, Matthew chapter 3. Here's a great example that distinguishes the, the Father who's speaking from heaven, the Holy Spirit who's coming down in the form of a dove, and Jesus who is being baptized. Clearly, they are distinct persons. And so that would be the second step. The third step would be then demonstrating that each one of these distinct persons is actually divine. And so we would look at things like the deity of Christ. You look at uh, passages like John 1.1 1, 1, or John 10.30 where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And you have these clear passages that demonstrate that Jesus is divine. You look at uh, passages on the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 5. Right? So lying to the Holy Spirit is equated with lying to God. And so you have uh, these arguments that demonstrate that each person is a divine person. So you have one God, but you have three distinct persons, and those three distinct persons are divine. The conclusion is uh, the Trinity. The conclusion is that the three divine persons are together the one God. And that is one way that we could make an, a biblical argument for the Trinity.